We already know that the solids, liquids and gases are the three states of matter. Let's look at each of their features. A solid's particles are arranged regularly and packed together tightly. These particles can only vibrate. They cannot move around. They have strong attraction forces between the particles. Liquid particles are loosely packed. They are still touching but there are gaps between them. The forces between the particles are not as strong as that of the solids, so particles can move around each other. This leads to the particle arrangement to be random. Gas particles just move randomly at high speed in every direction. The particles are so far apart that there is little to no forces acting between them. Here are some more properties of each state of matter. Solids have a fixed shape, but liquids and gases do not. Solids and liquids cannot be compressed as easily as gas can be. Gases have a very low density when compared to liquids which have a higher density than gases but a lower density than solids which have the highest density. Liquids and gases can flow but solids cannot. Gases will expand to fit all available space but solids and liquids do. When we add heat energy to any state of matter, it increases the kinetic energy of the particle, which we detect as an increase in temperature. The SHC, or specific heat capacity of something, is the amount of energy required to increase 1 kg of that substance by 1 degree Celsius. SHC is measured in joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Here's the equation we use. Change in thermal energy equals mass into SHC into change in temperature. Let's look at an example. The specific heat capacity of water is 4200 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. If the mass was 300 grams and a starting temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, firstly you must calculate the grams into kilograms. Next is 100 degrees Celsius. The change in temperature would be 85 degrees Celsius. Then, if we substitute it and multiply all our values, we would get 100,700 joules as our answer. Now let's take a look at the energy involved when there is a change of state. So if we conduct an experiment and we heat water continuously, the water temperature rises until the water starts to boil and then the temperature will remain constant until all the water has been turned from a liquid to gas. The energy supplied is doing work separating the water molecules. So the thermal energy supplied is used to overcome the forces between the molecules of the liquid. It During any change of state, melting or freezing, boiling or condensing, the temperature remains constant. Well, that's all for today. If you preferred it instead of a whack in the face with your textbook, then like and consider subscribing.